If you want to code daily but you're finding it a little bit hard to build the habit, then don't worry because here are five tips that are backed by researchers and that I have used personally myself to build successful habits, be it going to the gym or learning to code back in my university days or even making content consistently. You can apply these tips right away in your daily lives to achieve your coding goals finally this year and hopefully make your GitHub profiles go from this to this. There's also one bonus tip at the end for those of you who are suffering from major procrastination issues, so keep watching. Without any further chit chat, let's begin. Starting with tip number one, create a three-part habit process. The three-part habit process or the habit loop was popularized in the book The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. In this book, Charles Duhigg says that the basis of all habits are three things, cue, routine, and reward. Let's understand what these three things mean. Cue is a consistent trigger that tells you that you need to perform the habit that you're trying to build. So in this case, the cue will let you know that it's time for you to start learning to code. The cue could be a specific time of the day, let's say in the morning, or the cue could be like after performing an action, let's say after dinner. Then comes the routine, which is performing the actual habit itself. So once your cue is triggered, you need to dive into your coding. Initially, let's start simple, let's say 30 minutes every day, and gradually you can increase this time. Then comes the reward, which is where you celebrate your progress. The reward could be, let's say, a coffee break or you creating a social media post where you are tracking your everyday learning goals. I've seen lots of people do that on Twitter where they are posting their daily learnings. So you could even do something like that that helps you build a developer presence online as well and even improves your visibility to potential recruiters out there. For example, your habit loop could look something like this. Every day after having my breakfast, I will sit down to code for 30 minutes. After that, I will share my learnings from the session on Twitter or on my Medium blog. Tip number two is to make the most out of your willpower. In 1996, Roy Baumister conducted a study involving chocolates and radishes. Participants were asked to resist chocolates and eat radishes instead. After eating, they were asked to perform some tasks. Now those people who resisted eating the chocolates and ate the radishes instead showed decreased performance in the task. This suggested that our willpower is limited and gets depleted over time. Another study was conducted by Baba Shev in 1999, where some people were asked to remember a seven digit number and the other were asked to remember a two digit number. Then they were asked to eat either cake or fruit. Those people who were asked to remember the seven digit number were more likely to choose cake over fruit as compared to the people who were asked to remember the two digit number. These studies discuss the concept of decision fatigue, which means that when we take a decision, our willpower gets reduced. Willpower is like a muscle that gets tired with use. So every morning when you wake up, your willpower is at its highest and with every decision that you make, it gets depleted. For example, in the morning, if you decide to have a breakfast, if you choose to have a healthier breakfast of let's say oats and milk instead of cereal and milk, you have in a way resisted some temptation that has resulted in your willpower getting depleted. As you resist temptations throughout the day and make more decisions throughout the day, your willpower gets further depleted, which means that at the end of the day, you are more tired and you are more likely to make bad decisions at the end of the day because your willpower is at its lowest. So what lesson can you take from these studies? Since you're building a new habit, which requires a lot more willpower in the beginning, it's better if you try to schedule your coding sessions in the morning as compared to in the evening. This principle is something that I use myself for working out. I know from my past experience that if I schedule my gym sessions towards the end of the day, I will procrastinate and put it off and I'm more likely not to go to the gym at all. That way, my hardest decision of the day is already over in the morning itself. Tip number three is to set realistic goals. Now I know there are lots of people online that are telling you that you can learn to code within three months or six months, you can get a job. Though they might have worked out for a few people, these are not very realistic. Instead, you should make goals that are smart. 
SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant and Time Bound. This framework helps you create more clear and attainable goals and is well supported by research in goal setting theory. Let's start with the S in SMART that stands for Specificity or Specific Goals. So you need to clearly define what you want to achieve in your daily coding session. Let's say I want to learn loops in Python in my today's session. Next, measurable goals. So determine how you will measure your progress. Now you need to make sure that your goal is something that's measurable. So let's say if your goal was to learn loops, one way to measure it is to be able to solve three questions related to loops in Python. Next is achievability. Make sure your goal is attainable considering your current skill level and other commitments as well. So this means that if you're making a goal like I want to learn React today, that might be something that's not possible. That is a topic that requires a lot more hours and dedication. So make sure that the goal you're putting is actually practical and attainable by you according to your current skill set as well as your commitments. Next, you have relevant. Ensure that your goal aligns with your broader goals like career advancement or personal development because if you don't know why you're doing something, you'll end up giving up on it. According to the self-determination theory, it suggests that Intrinsic motivation, motivation that comes from inside, is much stronger when goals are aligned with your own personal values and interests. Lastly, your goals must be time bound. Setting a deadline for goal achievement can create a sense of urgency and can help in prioritizing tasks. So your smart goal could be something like this. I want to learn Python loops today so that I'm able to solve at least three coding problems that involve the concept of loops to create more career opportunities for yourself and my deadline is the next 60 minutes or the next 90 minutes i want to tell you a little story here when i was in my university i think around my second year so i decided that i wanted to learn web development one smart goal which i didn't realize was a smart goal back then that i created for myself was that i was going to build one specific feature involving html css and javascript it could be any small feature but i'm going to build it every single day for the next 30 days to get better at front-end development and i was supposed to push my code whatever i had built to github so that ended up being my reward so that little green square that appears on your github profiles served as sort of a reward for me next Tip number four is to track your progress. A study was conducted by the American Psychological Association that explored the impact of goal setting and progress monitoring on goal achievement. It found that individuals who regularly tracked their progress toward their goals were more likely to achieve them as compared to those who didn't. And this relationship between tracking progress and the goals was seen consistently across different types of goals. And this also links back to the habit loop where the act of tracking your progress itself would serve as a reward. When you perform your habit, record it in some way or form, be it making a Twitter tweet, be it creating a blog post or be it pushing your code to GitHub. This will also help you create a sense of accountability. If you're not tracking your goals, you're more likely to skip doing it altogether. And it's okay if you skip like a day or two in the middle because I also did that in my 30 day challenge. But I make sure that if I skipped a day or two, I would cover that up in the upcoming days. So instead of doing one task, I would do two tasks the other day. You can use platforms like GitHub to track your coding progress as well as to share your projects with other people. Even courses online have this built in tracking system where when you complete a video or where you complete a lesson, it automatically marks it as check or it gives you a progress tracker of how much of the course is completed. Or if you like to track your goals offline, you like to write it down on a piece of paper, you can choose to do that, create a journal for your habits. So back when I was learning data structures and algorithms, again, I created a smart goal for myself that I'm going to spend the next three months learning data structures and algorithms. And I laid down a very specific plan of what I was going to learn every single day, every single week, as well as every single month. At the time, I was not aware of Notion. I think it was still relatively new then. So I used to have this notebook where I used to write them down. I created a table of contents of all the topics that I planned to learn in the next three months and every day I would create a checklist of the topics that I was going to cover and I would plan it a day ahead. 
And once that topic was completed, I would have the satisfaction of ticking it off from my daily to-do list. It also served as like a visual reminder of how much I had already covered and how much was left. That's something that worked out incredibly well for me. That's why now I have taken that exact study plan that I had from my notebook and I've ported it to Notion in the form of these Notion templates, these study plans. Now I've created different study plans for learning React JS or HTML CSS, Git, GitHub, and many more of these technologies. If you want to learn more about it, I've added a link in the description box below. The last tip is to make coding enjoyable. Another reason why we end up giving up on our habits is because we don't find it fun or enjoyable. And that usually happens when the habit itself is too easy or too hard. And that prevents you from getting in the flow state. What's the flow state? The flow state, also known as being in the zone, is a psychological concept or a psychological state. So when you're in a flow state, you're fully engaged and focused on that task. So this intense focus enhances your ability to learn and also helps you develop new skills. When you perform a certain activity in the flow state, it appears to be much easy. You feel like you don't have to put as much effort into it, even though it's still quite challenging. This can make the process of building a new habit less daunting and more enjoyable. Thus, it can increase the likelihood of you sticking to this habit in the long run. So here are some simple ways using which you can get into the zone of coding. First, it's very important for you to pick the right challenges. For example, let's say you're doing some lead code challenges and you're still relatively a beginner at it. So instead of jumping to the medium or hard challenges, it's ideal for you to start with beginner challenges and then level up from there. The other tip is to cut out distractions. Make sure you, the space where you're coding is free of interruptions. So this could include things like turning off the Wi-Fi inside of your phones or turning off the notifications in your phone or keeping your phone in some other room. You could also use apps that help you build focus or you could use things like a Pomodoro timer or some focus applications or applications that block distractions while you're working. And finally, we've reached the bonus tip. This is the five minute rule. Oftentimes you'll find yourself procrastinating learning to code and that's completely normal. Everyone goes through those phases, but if you're going through some major procrastination issues, then here's a simple trick to fix that. It's called the five minute rule and here's how you can use it. So every single day when you're feeling like you don't want to code, instead of thinking of it that you have to learn to code for 30 minutes, all you have to do is to just commit to learning to code for five minutes. Now you might be thinking, how is learning to code for just five minutes going to help you achieve your coding goals? Well, the idea here is once you've begun learning, you'll find it much easier to continue beyond those initial five minutes because you've already overcome that initial barrier to starting that activity. You've now already built that momentum and that momentum will most likely help you keep going for the entire 30 minutes. Doing something for just five minutes helps break down more complex or more overwhelming tasks into smaller tasks, which make them look less daunting or less overwhelming. It tricks your brain into beating procrastination because now you think it's just five minutes. Now it's possible that even beyond those five minutes, you may not want to continue doing that. And then you need to figure out what's stopping you from doing it. You need to revisit what I said previously which is is it too easy or is it too hard for you or do you have too many distractions around you or it could be that your willpower is just completely depleted and you don't have the mental energy to go through with it and for those days honestly it's okay to just skip it as long as you get back to that habit the next day remember consistency might look different for everyone it doesn't have to be perfect so every time you feel like procrastinating over your coding goals just think of it like this i'm going to do it for five minutes and see if i like it or not all right, so that's all I had. I hope you found something helpful or useful. If you want to check out my 30 day coding challenge that I did back in the day, you can check it out using the link in the description. Or if you want to check out my study plans, you can also check them out using the link in the description box below. I'll see you in the next video.